Hello, and thanks for joining us. When you find yourself spending a lot of extra time in your house, you start to notice some of those things you've been meaning to fix, but never found the time. Well, today we're going to show you how to fix that worn out ottoman. To do this project, you will need to gather a few supplies. We have chosen a vinyl fabric to cover our ottoman as it receives a lot of wear, but you could also choose any heavier fabric. When you are sewing with these heavier fabrics, I recommend using home deck thread. Home deck is available in three weights for different effects. I will be using the 60 weight to sew my seams and the 30 weight to add some bold top stitching lines. In both cases, I will use the 60 weight in the bobbin to maintain the seam strength. Home deck is available in 20 colors in all three weights, so it will be easy to find a good match. I have also picked up a large shank button to add some detail to my ottoman. You will need some pliers and a screwdriver to remove the old cover and a staple gun with half inch staples to reattach the cover. It is also useful to have a seam roller when you are working with vinyl. Because this ottoman was constructed with squares of fabric joined together, I have decided to copy the design. An ottoman is usually shaped as a cube, which is a fairly simple shape to recover. First, turn the ottoman upside down to determine how the old cover was attached. You may need to unscrew the legs to remove the cover and pull off the square fabric that finishes the underside. In my case, the legs were attached to a bottom wood panel, so I will unscrew the screws that hold the bottom in place and remove the whole piece, which I will also use to finish the ottoman once it has been recovered. Using the point of your screwdriver, twist off the old staples enough to grab them with the pliers and pull out. Take caution when doing this and wear some protective gloves to protect your hands if the screwdriver should slip. Once all the staples have been removed, snip any threads that may be holding the buttons in place, then gently pull the cover off. You can use the old cover pieces to make a pattern for your new cover by tearing apart the seams and laying out all the individual pieces. Because this particular ottoman has just square pieces, I've decided to also measure the square's length and width and cut out one pattern for the pieces that apply. I will need to cut eight larger rectangular pieces for the bottom eight squares to allow for the added length that wraps under the ottoman. Check to make sure all the squares are the same dimension, then cut one pattern piece out of firm paper or cardboard and place on the underside of your vinyl. Draw around the pattern with a pen or felt pen, leaving enough space between the squares for adding your seam allowance. Use a clear ruler to add an even half inch seam allowance around all of your squares and one and a half inches along the bottom edge of eight squares. Now we can sew. Here are a few tricks to make sewing with vinyl easier. Use a large eye non-stick needle on your machine. If your machine has a dual feed system or a walking foot attachment, use this to keep the machine from sticking to the fabric and causing skipped stitches. If you don't have a walking foot, try stitching over strips of tissue paper, then pulling the paper away later to prevent the sticking. This is only necessary when you are stitching on the vinyl side as in when you are top stitching. With home deck 60 weight in the needle and bobbin of your machine, join the squares in pairs. Press the seam to one side with a seam roller. Then switch to 30 weight home deck in your needle and run an even line of top stitching along that side of the seam. You may want to test your stitching on a scrap to make sure that your machine is able to handle the heavier fabrics. If it is a problem, you can choose to top stitch the seams on either side of a pressed open seam. Now join two pairs together. Two squares with two rectangular shapes for each of the four sides and two squares to two squares for the top piece. And again, run a line of top stitching along the seam. Where the four corners meet, the material can be fairly bulky. 
Try hammering the fabric on the inside to flatten out the bulk before stitching and using a hump jumper to get over the bulk. You will end up with four side squares and one top square. Join the seams on the four side squares to make a circle, making sure the longer rectangular pieces are at the bottom all the way around to allow for going under the cube. Now place the final square right sides together with the sides and pin or clip the corners to match. Stitch around, taking care not to stretch the fabric and keeping the corners matched. Slip the cover over the ottoman and place the whole unit face down on a firm surface. Check to make sure your corners are lined up perfectly to the corners of the cube. Then pull down firmly and place one or two staples in each corner. Flip your unit over to check that everything is in place, then flip it back and continue stapling around the bottom, folding the excess in at the corners and adding several staples to hold the corners tight. Trim away any excess fabric. As an option, you can add a large shank button to pull the top cushion in. Because my unit came with a pre-drilled hole, this was easy to do. I simply threaded a needle with four strands of home deck and tied a firm knot. I then took a stitch through the cover at the join, through the shank of the button, through the hole in the cube, through a small button or bead on the inside, then up through the hole again. Tie two or three firm knots once you have pulled the button down tight and you have added a nice detail to the top of your cushion. Once the cover is firmly attached, reattach the wooden bottom. My ottoman now looks new and is ready for years more of service. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions and let us know what you'd like to see next time. We'll see you all then.